Hi everyone. Welcome to this session of our web series, Fireside Chat with Champions, in which we interview global business leaders, asking them crowdsourced questions relevant to the biggest challenge we face today, COVID-19 and its impact on various aspects of business and society, and the way we can steer ourselves clear of certain uncertainties. Today we have a very special guest with us, Lin Young, President of Innovation Idea Institute. Innovation Idea Institute is an innovation theme think tank founded by the Harvard scholars aimed to foster forward thinking thought leadership on innovation, thought building, interdisciplinary collaboration among thinkers, doers, innovators, disruptors, business leaders, policy makers, and hence stimulating the knowledge sharing in an open, progressive, and cooperative system. Activities include innovation theme research, education, and investment. Lin is an entrepreneur, venture capitalist, and private policy expert, born and raised in China, and later educated in US at Harvard University. Lin steers her career across business, policy, media, and lectures at Harvard STP program. She also served as a senior advisor to Sani Group on globalization and innovation, and a partner for its investment arm. She is also a special contributor to major Chinese and American media outlets and is regarded as a credible China storyteller in the international community. She is, was elected as a young global leader and a new champion by the World Economic Forum. She has also served as key anchor for China Central Television, CCTV, International in Beijing, and also worked with CNN in Washington DC Bureau. Thanks, Lynn, for accepting our invitation. I would request you to talk a little bit about you and your current interest and activities. Floor is yours, Lynn. Thank you so much, Deepak, for your warm introduction. Um, yes, uh, and uh, it's a, such a pleasure to be here talking to you and your audiences. I am, as you said, I am both an entrepreneur and a venture capitalist, and I have a very diverse background before that. I started my career in multiple large organizations in different countries um, before I started my own venture called Innovation Ideas Institute. Um, it's an innovation think tank. We try to build up the innovation thought leadership, especially for the fourth industrial revolution, and also trying to build up an ecosystem for different players, entrepreneurs, investors, stakeholders to come together for healthy development. In the meanwhile, I have been involved in venture capital investment, mostly in cross-border investments in the last few years, but now primarily focusing on early stage investment here in the US. Um, by you know, being on both sides of the aisle, I think I have a unique understanding about what investors uh, are looking for and what um, value entrepreneurs should uh, provide and what entrepreneurs really need. Uh, so how, you know, also how to create a value and how to create a meaningful uh, venture. So hopefully I have, you know, uh, some different perspectives about, um, you know, uh, advices to you and to your uh, audiences. Very well uh, summarized, Lynn. It is a pleasure to have you with someone who is having perspective from both the sides. Because until, unless you have been on the other side of the moon, you don't know exactly what's there. So that that's, uh, brings us to our first question. Being someone who has been a serial entrepreneur, who have been a policy interventionist, I would put it that way, a, a media personality, as well as someone who has been actually also an investor. I would like to understand from you that how do you see COVID impacting the global economy in general and startup ecosystem in particular? Uh, great, that's a great question. Everybody's thinking about this every day these days, right? Um, indeed, it's a very special and challenging time we are having right now. And uh, none of us would have imagined our economy, our society in 2020, armed with advanced technology and unparalleled civilization could be unpaused by a virus. And uh, if we look at the big picture first on the global economy, you know, what we hear most is recession or downturn. Um, yes, it's true. Many businesses are hurt. People are unemployed. It's painful at tough times. But I'm more uh, optimist. And uh, I would rather see this as a resetting rather than a recession. In every crisis, you know, the Great Depression, the financial crisis in 2008 is a resetting process for the path and the birth of the new order. 
you know, this crisis is of course more complex, right? It's not only about economy, it's not only about business, but also about personal health, about, you know, even politics. The situation is more complex. For example, how we control the spread of the virus without minimizing the disruption, sorry, how do we control the spread of the virus, uh, you know, while minimizing the disruption of the business? And how to reopen the economy without risking public health? Right? How do we keep the social distancing, you know, but still maintain that what virtual or virtual or human connectedness? How do we uh, work and study online but still have the efficiency and effectiveness? And everything we do, every decision we make is a complicated process and the impact is more profound than before. And finding the solutions are very difficult. So this is actually where opportunities will emerge. And uh, if we see the smaller picture of the startup ecosystem, right, I think I, we should be even more optimistic. Uh, of course, there are disruptions, you know, the vibrant, uh, I think the, in the last few years, the global uh, ecosystem for startup entrepreneurship has been very uh, growing tremendously. You know, I have been working for the cross-border global startup ecosystem for quite a few years. But it has been slowed down in recent two or three years, and even before COVID. And now, given the COVID um, has been, you know, have challenging the international travels, you know, the communications, it's getting even more less a priority for the startup community. I think people are more focusing on regional, local fundraising and local growth. International growth is still, uh, you know, an interest, but I think it's a less priority at this time. And uh, in the meanwhile, I think, of course, startups are having difficulties in fundraising. You know, they are lowering their valuations or expectations. They have to fix their business model. Uh, venture capital firms also, you know, they have difficulties in fundraising if they have not closed their fund. They have to rethink their investment strategies. Although, you know, I hear venture capital firms are still investing during this time. They're meeting founders through Zoom. They're doing different things. But, you know, I think, uh, in general, they are less aggressive. You know, everything is slowing down a little bit. Um, but I, as I said, uh, startups communities should be more optimistic. Why? Because first of all, what what are startups, right? What 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 is a startup? Startups are supposed to be newcomers, uh, innovators who are challenging the status quo or who are born to disrupt the incumbents. And, and this time of crisis, the incumbents are are gone, you know, are, 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 and at least are not working properly. You know, the status quo is gone and without you even fighting it. So the world is creating the space for startups to disrupt, for you to stand out. If you really have a timely product, if you really have a good service um, and solutions, it is your time. And meanwhile, I think because uh, for the time of crisis, big corporations are having uh, difficulty. They're having a bigger, you know, headcount, a bigger cost than startups. So startups are more agile and easy to move, easy to pivot, and easier to adapt to new situations than big corporations. And uh, third, I think, uh, because when, when it was good times, people all rush into businesses, right? Uh, when it's good time, when I remember for some time, everybody I met was a venture capitalist because there was so much money around. I mean, everybody I met was entrepreneur because it's easy to start, start a company, it's easy to raise money. But now, because it's so difficult, so people are, you know, the, the people who are not serious, they're coming off the market. And, or if they're not competitive, they're washed out of the market itself. So this time is the time for real entrepreneurs who are really passionate about their, what they're doing and if I really can provide a very high quality service or solutions for the time. And uh, of course, it's not easy, but uh, remember, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. And uh, you know, if you stay in the game for long, if you can survive this time, the future will be brighter than what is now and what is in the past. And uh, so I think uh, I, I'm an uh, optimist and I hope the startup community can feel you know, optimistic at this time. And it actually, actually, of course, today in the US, I think the, um, the data came out, the retail data are better than expected, the stock market jumped. So the, the rebound has been actually 
better faster than expected hopefully yeah very well articulated and uh, the seeds of optimism which you are sowing in people's mind that's very very critical when we are going through such a difficult time uh lem you have been uh, someone who has been seeing innovations very closely right you are also running an institution which thrives based on innovation of people from different part of the society i would like to understand from you that though the covid have impacted different sectors differently so we are seeing the challenges in restaurant sector hospitality airlines but at the same time we are seeing in digital and innovation space there is a lot of positives which are happening suddenly as you are talking about zoom you see their numbers have increased substantially and another thing is that you have seen that uh, all the typical large digital companies they have been offshoots of recessionary pressures so whether we talk about the uber and the facebook they survived well the recession and they are now the large top unicorns i would like to understand from you what do you think about how the digital and innovation is going to go through post covid era era when actually things start becoming better than what they are today uh yes um that's a great question as i as we said earlier and you also mentioned about uh the traditional industries right retail manufacturing who were already suffering before covid-19 right it's already a slowing down dying business um and now they're suffering even more and other people business right like tourism hospitality restaurants are very severely impacted um clearly we see um this has turned out to be a great opportunity for digital enterprises as you mentioned like online learning digital health remote office solutions enterprise so i think the biggest impact of covid is technology turned out to be the star to be the darling of this crisis you know I, you know 40 years to come and it will only get accelerated after this i think um technology was already very hot in the last few years and uh, but we're talking about here is a new generation of technology like like 5G or automation IoT AI well these are already been talked about quite a quite a while in recent years but i think these are still at a very early stage right many of them are not widely used yet um uh, but will be accelerated in the years to come for example like automation you know everybody i think a lot of venture capitalists are saying automation will be the next um hype um i see i already saw the grocery delivery robot startup you know 3 years ago in san francisco but at this time of crisis i don't think they are playing a huge role in delivering groceries during the coronavirus crackdown so it is not that mature yet but i think it will be accelerated ai was a very hype in the last 3 4 years but you know i read on some you know um, news that some of the new the data analytics ai during the coronavirus um crisis was not effective some a lot of still human um labor ha- has to be you know or human collecting the data has to be used 5g is not really here real 5g is not here yet right and but given this video booming i think you know it will become even faster in this so i think all this new generation of technology will be the key thing the key impact coming out of this crisis um you know the 5g ai iot revolution will automate or augment repetitive human labor leveling that playing field for labor and logistic costs for a global business um you know in the years to come so i think in the uh, the next in like new smart manufacturing intelligent automated uh factories emerging in many places locally in different countries but the transmit of labor and talent could you know happen between countries and in from a long distance globally and this probably will lead to a lot of new forms of supply chains a lot of new industry applications emerging from these technologies and also i think these technology will also shape the uh the national competitiveness of different countries we also you know bring some geopolitical changes um in the years to come right so again lin you have been like you know working across the globe you understand asia pretty well you understand the north america pretty well uh, i would like to understand from and you have been interacting with lot of cxo level people on a regular basis i would like to understand from you that how do you see that the rebound happening and which are the economies you see that they will be rebounding little bit faster and which are the economies you see that the rebound being little bit slow 
and what are the specific uh, ways and means do you think that an entrepreneur or a founder should be thinking when they are, we are seeing a global perspective and if we have to differentiate different regions? Um, yeah, uh, well, I hear I'm in Boston in the United States. Uh, the rebound is slowly happening. As I said, you know, cities are reopening in the recent week or two. Um, we see, as I mentioned earlier, the, the you know, the, the stock market already gone up quite a lot, signaling some kind of uh, rebounding expectations. Although I think the rebound will be still very volatile. You know, the whole economy will be volatile for a while, may take some time for full recovery, but people are more, I think are more, uh, you know, things probably are better than expected, come back. Um, last week, you know, Boston was the first week to open the restaurants. Uh, I passed by a street in Cambridge. The outdoor spaces are, were fully seated, right? That was the first day of the old reopening. So we also see the stores reopening here. People cannot wait to, you know, to do some shopping. So I think um, things may come back better than expected, but, you know, will take some time for a full recovery. Uh, if you're in old industries, like traditional industries, I think right now you should definitely find new ways uh, to survive this time as long as possible. In the meanwhile, as I said, technology will come out to be the darling of the next decade. You should learn fast and how to use this new generation technology to integrate this in your own industries. And you should use technology to augment human labor to reduce your cost and use this to think about what to offer to your customers, you know, either better, better products or services. And these are all what you need to think about. But if you're, you know, lucky in the technology business, right, it's good that, um, you know, you still have to think about how to master your way to deliver technology in a more human friendly or in a hum with a human touch so that, you know, you will have more sustainable growth in the longer term. So um, I think here we already see the light at the end of the tunnel, uh, somehow, maybe in the middle of the tunnel, but uh, things are coming. No, you're perfectly right. Like, you know, the old industry, like for example, we are into agriculture technology. We are suddenly seeing that people realizing the value of technology, even in uh, agriculture far more. In developing world, uh, uh, unlike in past where the egg tech used to happen only in the Netherlands, US and Canada, now, like in, in, in Indonesia, in Vietnam, in Philippines, in India, we are seeing more and more people are keen to adopt digital technologies, including the farmers, which are very slow in adopting new technologies. So as you rightly said, that uh, technology is going to be the darling for next 10 years, 15 years. And uh, I'm, I'm lucky that I actually happened to be in that industry. Now, that brings a little bit uh, something which is closer to you as an individual and as an organization. I would like to understand that as a person, Lynn, how she tackled this personal uh, economical and a social crisis called Corona and COVID. So on a personal level, how you coped it up and would you like to give some uh, inputs or insight to the audience that how to be mentally stronger in such a difficult conditions? Uh, yes, great question. Uh, thanks for this opportunity. I think it may be a cliche to say that when there's a crisis, there are opportunities, right? But it's so true. Uh, as I said, we should take this crisis as an opportunity for resetting. And uh, so first of all, I think we're still, no matter how optimistic we are or I am, we're still in the middle of the crisis, right? So the first advice is, you know, we're still facing a lot of uncertainties in the next months to come. So you should be really making very cautious actions at this time, preserve enough cash, cash is king and uh, you know survive as long as possible to be kept in the game and use this time to think deeper to do more research to do more r d fix your business models to better your product and services so this is time for quiet you know to to accumulate your resources to come up stronger evidence and uh, my second advice is i think you should stay vigilant about the present situation but always look a few steps ahead. For example, it's true that it's very difficult to do business as, you, as normal, 
The things change every day. You should keep up to date on what is happening and adapt what is what is right now very quickly because you have to survive. But meanwhile, you have to um, look a few steps ahead. You know, but the past month is, was hard and painful. Many of people are nervous and worry. But that was the time that you should already be looking for the reopening. So you shouldn't stay home worry and nervous, but you should, um, you know, think about how to reopen in two or three months. And now when we are reopening, it's already time to execute your strategy. It's not, you cannot like think of reopening oh, tomorrow, you know, and then when it's going to reopen tomorrow. So you should always look a few steps ahead. I, I, I was listening to a story of a small restaurant business. And when everybody was closed down, he was already making plans on how to reopen in, you know, three weeks time. So that was a very smart, small business owner. Um, third, I think, um, I think you should uh, pivot swiftly, uh, but focus on the long term, right? Uh, right now, I think we're not going to go back to the world we were in. And uh, we're going to have a new normal. Uh, many things uh, have changed. You probably have to think whether your customers' needs have changed. Are there different ways to serve your customers or clients? And uh, are these changes temporary or forever? These are the questions you have to think about, right? There may be silver linings you can use right now to find new opportunities. But do not be opportunistic. And you should uh, stay in your own course honing your own competitiveness and uh, you know your mindset and actions should be focused on your long-term success purpose and competence and not be just uh, you know optimist i i know you know some businesses were um you know for example they were in a really irrelevant business before the crisis but during the crisis they pivot into you know you know, maybe like a trade of math, the PPEs, masks, uh, which were not really in their advantage, but they were trying to pivot in that business. But after this business, you know, they didn't have any time to really fix their own business model, which they were good, very good at. So I think that was not a very smart way of utilizing their time and their expertise. So um, this is my third piece of advice. Uh, lastly, I think, as we said, technology will be very important, but the essence of any technology should be the everlasting value to people, not the technology itself, right? So you should stay on top of technology, but always keep the sense of humanity. So your end customers are people, not technology. So you're not developing technology for the sake of developing technology. You are using technology to serve people better. So utilize this time to reinforce your emotional connection with your customers, evaluate where your business fit with the current reality of things and how you could support your clients better, rather, you know, better, higher than just a monetary level. So I think this will help you gain your customers, um, you know, in the longer term. Well, that's an awesome piece of advice for young founders and entrepreneurs. Uh, would you also like to give some advice on a personal basis, how to be mentally strong? Because I, I see a lot of challenges there. Young entrepreneurs, they are, they are losing right, their mental uh, strength quite often. And then some of them also taking steps, which they should not be taking because of uh, the overall condition. Would you like to talk something about how they can be mentally strong, which could be our last question for this discussion? Yes, uh, yeah, I think. Uh, it's true, you know, people all like, all dislike challenges, you know, we hate tough times, we don't want difficulties, but we grow so much faster in challenges than in good times. I feel for myself, you know, as I said, I used to work for large organizations, you have the glamour of big brands and you know, have a big team to support you, but I feel like I myself, I grow 10 times faster in my own entrepreneurship journey in one year, then I've worked for larger organizations for maybe five years, right? Um, so I think, you know, at this time, as I said, you should realize your own value. You, you, you evaluate yourself, how, what you are really good at, you know, what your, your competitive advantage and how to utilize the resources around you to achieve your goal, to define your purpose. And uh, then I think, you know, we'll come out much better, much stronger out of this crisis. 
And uh, yeah, I think coming out of crisis, you know, uh, is you know, I hope good luck to you and all your audiences. It's uh, it, it's been uh, it, it, being an entrepreneur is not an easy journey, but I think it's a very worthy journey, especially when you see the light at the end of the tunnel. Probably that's the best um, you know you can get out of your your the pain you have been suffering. No, that's very very relevant. In fact, uh, I also believe in that when you have a challenging time, you come out with new ideas. Because I myself have been like you know have been on circuit for five years, speaking at all the places from World Economic Forum to United Nations and all the places. I gave myself a challenge that actually every day I learn from one very intelligent person who is far smarter than me. So I started this fireside chat and uh, like that was a challenge I put to myself. And uh, believe me, I have been very successful in doing that because uh, I'm having at least every day an intelligent person like you giving me insight and making me smarter. <laughs> So thanks, thanks a lot. Uh, I learned a lot from this discussion we had, and I'm very sure that audience would have also learned humongously with uh, the perspective which you have put to them. Thanks a lot for your time, and uh, look forward to see you in person once the COVID is over. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. It's a great initiative. I learned a lot from you too. Thank you. Take care. Bye.